Hello friends, now let us deal with inflammatory lesions associated with esophagus. So what are the inflammatory lesions which are going to uh, deal in this chapter? The inflammatory lesions include reflex esophagitis or uh, infectious esophagitis or chemical esophagitis or Barrett's esophagus. So first let us deal with reflex esophagus or uh, uh, it, will, it may also be called as gastroesophageal reflex disease. So we are dealing with reflex esophagitis. What is the main cause of reflex esophagitis? The major cause of reflex esophagitis is uh, it is due to reflex of gastric juice into esophagus resulting in reflex esophagitis. What are the main causes of reflex esophagitis or etiology? Reflex esophagitis it is basically uh, it may occur in normal healthy individuals even after meals or in pregnancy but in some clinical in conditions it becomes so excessive that uh, it may lead to inflammation of the lower use esophagus. Normally it occurs to everyone of us even after meals sometimes we feel uh, that reflex thing uh, or in pregnancy it is very common all these are physiological. But sometimes it becomes so extensive that uh, sometimes in some clinical conditions it is so extensive that it leads to uh, inflammation of esophagus. So basically speaking what are the etiological causes which, le which leads to these inflammation of esophagus. So first is sliding hiatus hernia. Because of this sliding hiatus hernia, there is reflex esophagitis every time because the gastric part entered into the esophagus. This is the main reason because even the acid is secreted in that place and there is reflex. And the second one is chronic gastric and duodenal ulcers. Even in these there is reflex esophagitis. Third one is nasogastrial tube intubation and the fourth one is persistent vomiting which may cause the same condition persistent vomiting and the fifth one is surgical vagotomy. Whenever we remove vagus then even then there is uh, uh, this reflex problem and the sixth one is neuropathy because in vagopathy vagus is the nerve which uh, uh, would uh, mediate the peristalsis but due to the absence of this there is very well peristalsis resulting in reflex uh, esophagitis even in neuropathy in alcoholics and diabetics and the seventh one is esophagogastrotomy esophago Gastrotomy. So in all these conditions, there is a chance of this uh, GRD. Uh, so coming to the pathogenesis of uh, uh, all these are etiological features. Coming to the pathogenesis of uh, e reflex esophagitis. What is the pathogenesis? So this is mainly due to the mucosal injury that happens. So to say. Uh, the, there is uh, duodenal bile reflex, there is duodenal acidic reflex. So how, what majorly causes? All these conditions which we have uh, discussed earlier, all these conditions basically lead to decrease in lower esophageal sphincter tone or increase in abdominal pressure. Right, all these uh, leads to uh, 
complex esophageal hiatus. So my question for you all is, among these seven conditions which I have mentioned, what are which conditions will increase the esophageal increase the abdominal pressure and which conditions will decrease lower esophageal sphincter? Try to find it and the answer in the comments and after uploading this video for 4 to 5 days, I would uh, give you the answer for it. Right? Uh, along with this, there are some other risk factors which may which may cause the reflex esophageal disease. They are, again going to A, uh, alcohol I have already mentioned. So even tobacco use may be a risk factor. And obesity, these are risk factors basically. Obesity, and I have uh, mentioned about pregnancy, hiatal hernia, right? Right, and uh, uh, I didn't mention about pregnancy, right? Yes, pregnancy, uh, pregnancy, there is increase in abdominal pressure. I have already mentioned in, a, in your previous class, so there, this may lead to reflexes. And though it is, it, yeah, it is uh, uh, physiological but not pathological, but sometimes it may become pathological and it may be due to CNS depressants or it may, there may be delayed gastric emptying or increased gastric volume. Right, all these are the risk factors of reflex esophagitis. So, coming to the morphological features of reflex esophagitis. So, in the morphological features of reflex esophagitis, endoscopically, what will what can you see? Endoscopically, uh, the demarcation, you know. Um, uh, esophagus is mainly esophagus or esophagus is mainly made up of a squamous epithelium that to stratified squamous epithelium and the stomach is a columnar epithelium so stomach columnar and here squamous so here you can see the demarcation here squamous and here columnar this demarcation is normally found in normal demarcation seen But here, there is loss of demarcation, right? So you can't differentiate between the uh, squamous and the columnar epithelium. So uh, here in reflex esophagitis, uh, one demarcation is lost. And then the distal esophageal mucosa becomes esophageal mucosa. How does it look? It becomes red, erythematous, friable, and whenever you touch it, it may bleed on touch, right? In advanced futures, this may, advanced disease, it may lead to basically trichures. Nodularity may be there or uh, nodularity may be there or there may be ulcerations or erosions may be seen. Anything may happen among these. Right? Now coming to the microscopic picture. How does microscopically this look? So microscopic picture, I want to draw the picture. So here the reflex changes in the distal uh, esophagus, they are basically basal cell hyperplasia. First, there may be basal cell hyperplasia and deep elongation of papillae. If you see, these are the papillae. Normally, in the stomach, they won't be that deep, but here there is deep elongation of papillae. Right? Right, you can see the deep elongation of papillae 1 and the basal cells are present here. The basal cells become hyperplastic. So let me draw this is, think that this is esophagus, so squamous epithelium. Right, try to stratify. 
and here it has to convert into columnar but the, the demarcation is basically lost and you can see the demarcation clearly right here the demarcation is lost right this is columnar epithelium and now inflammatory changes vary at the stage of the disease uh, this is uh, mucosa and this is lamina propria and this is submucosa muscularis mucosa this one is muscularis mucosa I think you can see it. this is muscularis mucosa this is muscularis mucosa and then this is submucosa and then this is muscular circular muscular longitudinal muscle right and this is circular muscle and this is longitudinal muscle right here you can see infiltration of neutrophils in the I think you can visualize it so this is mucosa this total this is submucosa this is muscle layer and this area is serosa so here you can see infiltrations that to lymphocytic infiltration and I mean mainly eosinophilic and polymorphic cells infiltration here right you can see in mm. mucosa and submucosa right so what are the basic features one is no demarcation between squamous and columnar and the other one is there is basal cell hyperplasia so I, I didn't I couldn't show this but in my next video I'll try to show this if possible if I get it and then you can see deep elongation of papillae neutrophils that is PMNs or eosinophilic infiltration infiltration is seen in mucosa and submucosa if this is early stage these are seen if it's late stage you can see fibrosis and lymphocytic infiltration I'm not drawing this diagram but this is what you can see in our next class we would deal about Barrett's esophagus basically infectious esophagus and other causes of esophagitis okay then bye